Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for what is the UMG input key selector. Let me run our quick little example. We'll see a giant box I can click on. Currently says empty. Click on it with my mouse. And now it's waiting for a key input. So I'll push a key, and it's now going to show the T key. I can do it again. I can use the mouse button. You can see the input. This is a widget that allows us to take in input from a keyboard, a mouse, a joystick, a controller, and then do something with that input. It's useful for key rebinding. So let's go ahead and take a look at the node. So this is our input key selector right here. We can find it in our palette under uncategorized. And if you drag it in, it's going to come out like this. I made it simply bigger so we could easily see it. Now by default, we have the following settings. We have our normal slot settings and our appearance settings, but the things that are unique to it are going to be our key selection. The first one is allow modifier keys. If this is checked, it's going to allow us to use the modifier keys, the control, the alt, the shift, and the command key if you're on OS X. Let me go and show you. By default, it's going to be checked. We'll run this, and I can click and do Alt D. Oops, try that again. There we go. And I get Alt D. Click again, maybe Shift X. I get Shift X. If we uncheck that, we go and run it again. I'll go and do Shift X again, and I'll get just X. I'll do Alt D. I'll get just D. So when this is checked, it allows you to use a modifier key. Unchecked, it will not allow you to use it. The second one is allow gamepad keys. If I had a gamepad hooked up, it would work the same way as allow modifier keys. If I have a gamepad hooked up, it'll basically allow it to take that input. By default, it is ignored. So if you wish to allow your player to use a gamepad and then read the gamepad input in this key selector, you're going to need to make sure this is checked. Now our last option are, are the escape keys. These are the keys that are basically not allowed in here and allow you to escape from the input. By default, you have the escape key itself on a keyboard, and then it also comes with the gamepad special right button. That's going to be the start button on, um, you know, your older controllers. It'll be the, I don't know what it's called on an Xbox One controller or the PS4, but it's the right one to the middle. If I go ahead and run this, I'll click in here and I'll hit escape. Well, it's going to say empty. Let's go ahead and set a key to G. I'll click again and hit escape. It's still going to say G. That is how you would escape out. This is useful, for example, if you have a key that's bound to something special that you don't wish them to rebind. Let's say I have the O button set to options. Now I'll go and add a new option. I'll go to O. Let's find the O key in here somewhere. There we go. Now we have the O key set up. I'll go ahead and play. Let's set this to something. So we'll go ahead and set it to the X key, as you can see here. I'll go ahead and go back in here. I'll hit O. And you'll notice it still says X. I can change it to F. I'll try O again, still F. So that allows you to make sure you have a key that will not be allowable inside of here. Now in terms of events, we have two events that are unique to this control. We have the on key selected and the on is key selected key changed. Let me go ahead and show you those. I have them currently set up for examples, but not running. And we'll go ahead and run both of these and show you what happens when we set up a key. And all this is going to do is print out a little message on what's happening. So we'll go ahead and hit play. We'll go ahead and go in here. You'll notice it says on is selecting key change none. On is selecting key change none. And on key selected four. We'll click it again. Now it says on is selecting key change four. I'll go ahead and click another button, four and four. So what happens is we go in here and we look. The on is selecting key changed basically will fire off when you click or it stops doing something on this node. For example, when we play it and click it, that's when it fires once, and then when we leave it, it'll fire again. In this case, you'll notice the second one on key selected did not fire. That's because I escaped out. I didn't actually select a key. If I was to go in and hit the G key, you'll see it on key selected G fired right here because I selected an actual key. Now if we go back in here and we hit escape, you'll see it's doing the same thing. Or if I go in here and hit H, you'll see it's doing the same thing. So that's the basics of that. 
this will let you know whenever you clicked or it stopped being selected. This, my input key, the on key selected, will let you know when an actual key was selected or chosen. You did not escape out. And it gives you back a selected key from this one, which is your input cord, which will give you the key value and then any of the modifier keys. For whenever it's changed, you can always ask it, what was the selected key? That's what I'm printing out. The my input key selector here, has a few variables. One of them is a selected key. That's a key that is currently selected and it will give you the value. And that's it. That is our input key selector. It's useful for getting key input without having to do anything special and then you can do what you want with it. For example, making key bindings inside of your game.